Hi, and welcome to Replay, your chance to catch up on everything you missed this week at today's Community Church. If you want to find out more about TCC, the Community Grocery, Postcode, or any of our events, you can follow us on social media, click the link below, or scan the QR code. Let's get to watching the gathering. So there's been a lot of news this week, and Rachel's actually going to address that and lead us in prayer. Thank you, Rachel. Thanks, fam. Um, I realize we just sat down, but if you're able to, if you want to stand, that would be good. And we're going to pray together. You know, um, it's been a big week for news in the UK for many different reasons. Um, perhaps the biggest of which has been that obviously Queen Elizabeth passed away, sadly, on Thursday. And, you know, this is whatever you think about royalty and politics, you know, because that was another big thing this week. Um, we really want to pray for and honor our leaders. Um, scripture tells us to do so. And you know, when when leadership of a country prospers, the country prospers. Um, scripture says that righteousness exalts a nation. And so we want to, as people of faith, we want to honor the queen. Um, we want to pray for Liz Truss. We want to honor the king. And we want to pray, you know, also, we, we'd be silly not to think that we're, we're in a time of crisis as a country, that also Liz is here to lead us through um, a cost of living crisis, which for each of us, we will be anxious or nervous about at some level because this impacts everyone. And so rather than just come in uh, with fear, we want to attach our faith to this next season. So we know sometimes we feel fearful, we feel anxious maybe about what's going to happen with the country, what direction is it going to be led in. You know, maybe some people are nervous that the Queen has passed away. I don't know what it is, but we're going to pray and we're going to, we're going to honor, we're going to say thank you to God for the Queen. But we're also going to pray looking ahead and say, God, for every, uh, for every difficult piece of news, for every anxiety we face, for the leadership of this country, God, actually, we believe you're the king. You're the king. You're in control. And so we're going to trust you. And, you know, especially in this next season with friends and family and people we're around, um, people are nervous about businesses closing, about not being able to pay their bills, wherever it is and wherever people sit. We have a hope that transcends this season. It's a season, it'll come and go. And so we want to make sure in this season we're trusting King Jesus. I do. And so we're going to pray, we're going to honor the Queen, we're going to pray for King Charles, as he will be, we're going to pray for Liz Truss, and we're just going to pray for this next season, that we as people of faith would have the courage, the boldness, and the faith personally, and for others, to lean into God in this season, not just rely on the comings and goings of the economy, but actually trust Him through every moment. Are you with me? So, so if you're here in a person of faith, I'm going, to, I'm going to pray, but I want you to pray as well. You know, I believe actually God, He is hears us when we pray by ourselves in a room but there is a great power in people coming together to pray and put their faith together and believe for something um, and thank also thank God for what he's done through the queen in her reign is that okay amazing okay let's pray father first of all we thank you for the life of queen elizabeth god we thank you for her faith for her leadership god for her long-term commitment and service to not just serving this country god but to serving you God, I thank you that as she's gone, I guess, from glory to another glory, um, God, and as she's welcomed at the gates of heaven, Father, we thank you for the legacy that's been left. God, and we pray in this next season, God, for the new king, God, that he would have a sense of truth and justice and righteousness, God, to lead not just from tradition, God, but to lead this country in a direction of health, God, and of, of one that looks to you, God, of one that trusts you. God, and we pray you bless and care for the family at this time. God, as they grieve and they mourn, Father, I pray you be with them, comfort them. God, wherever we are in that, God, I pray you'd help us to lift our eyes ahead, lift our eyes forward. God, as we pray for our new Prime Minister, God, pray, God, I pray you would give her the courage and the boldness to do what is right, not just what is popular. God, in a time where our economy is on a downturn, God, we pray that you give her wisdom, give her grace. God, we pray for provision and wisdom in those rooms where decisions are made. God, not that we, we wouldn't be people that just complain or have our view, God, but that we would put our faith to you and we would look to you, God, and we would trust you, whether personally we're anxious, God, or whether uh, we're dealing with people who are frightened or anxious, God, help us to be those who put our hope in you. God, for every 
everything we've heard in the last week, two weeks. God, would you help us, God? We lay it before your feet this morning. We thank you for those that lead us, have led us. God, and we pray looking forward, God, that for each of us, we would center on the hope that we have and we would look to you. We would trust in you for every provision, God, for every need, emotional, mental, physical, whatever it is, God, that we would look to you in this season, God, now and forever, God, and that through that, people would see you. Through our hope in you, our trust in you, people would see you. It's in your name, Lord, we ask. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I just want to say a massive well done um, to Ollie, Ollie Ross, who is on the front row stand up. Ollie is the assistant manager for our community grocery. Congratulations for beating me in a 10K race. Well done, Ollie. Um, he's raised 600 quid for the grocery that goes directly to the members and the people that were supporting. Well done, mate. Proud of you. Um, yeah, so the Wigan 10K was this morning. I got a shiny medal, and that is going on eBay straight after the game. No, I'm joking. I'm an Enneagram 3, if you know what that is. This is going up on my wall. Um, it was a great atmosphere over there. Now, today, um, I thought what I'd do is I'd show some legs, um, but I should have done that before we took the offering because we would have had more if I'd shown my legs before that. I didn't know it was that kind of church. Well, it is, okay. Um, so, but today, I want to talk to you about endurance, and today's theme is all about running a race. And so there's going to be lots of running analogies. So if you don't like running, then I apologize. Today's going to be traumatic for you. But before I do, I thought I'd share the wealth. I've got some Uncle Joe's mint balls here that they gave out for free for anybody that finished. Would anybody like some Uncle Joe's mint balls? I'm going to throw them over here, okay, because there was no hands and I'm going to get you moving, okay? If it hits you in the eye, email complaints at tcclive.com. There you go. Watch your head, watch your head, watch your head. Oops. There was one lady there who didn't know that was happening, and suddenly sweets were raining down from heaven. She was like, it's answered prayer. That's what I prayed for in that little worship song. Okay, right, I want to talk to you about endurance, and there's a scripture in the book of 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 to 27, and it's going to come on screen, um, but if you want to look at it in your Bibles, it's the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9. The, reala the reality is, my friend, that life is an endurance race. It is a marathon, and it is not a sprint, and those people that live life like a sprint live usually for the weekend. They're just trying to get to the weekend, get to the Friday night. But have you ever noticed that people are always unhappy on Monday morning? It's this cyclic way of living. But they do that with other ways, from paycheck to paycheck, from holiday to holiday. But that's not the way you were designed to live your life. Did you know that you can have everlasting peace in your heart every single waking moment of your life? Did you know that the creator God is with you 24-7, even watching over you as you sleep? Even your life is a marathon race with God. He is ever-present and eternal and always there. So let's read this in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9. The um, guy called Paul writes this, and this is what he says. You've all been to the stadium and seen the athletes race. Everyone runs, one wins. Run to win. Run to win. All good athletes train hard and they do it for a gold medal that tarnishes and fades. You're after one that's gold eternally. I don't know about you, but I'm running hard for the finish line. I'm giving it everything I've got no sloppy living for me. I'm staying alert and in top condition. And I'm going to get caught. I'm not going to get caught napping, telling everyone else all about it and then missing out myself. Run to win. But you've got to endure, right? You've got to run past the stitches. You've got to run past the pain. It's not all downhill and easy running. Sometimes there's a sharp incline. Sometimes the weather's bad. Sometimes you just got to go through some stuff. That's why I think the utmost respect must go to our late queen. 
So I don't care whether you're a royalist or a Republican or whatever, but you cannot shame this woman for her duty and her selfless um, care of this nation through all the changes. I read this, um, I read this little bit in Sky News um, from a guy called David uh, Blevins, and this is what, what he says. And I think this story represents the power of faith in Queen Elizabeth's life. Uh, this is what it said. It was just on my news feed yesterday. It said, I've reported the Queen's significant role in this peace process for 30 years, but nothing comes close to 1995, uh, writes the Sky News senior island correspondent David Blenins, uh, Blevins. Downtown Radio, where I was working at the time, had sent me to a conference in Windsor. The schedule included a church service on Sunday morning, but only three of us out of the 150 wakened in time to attend. That was a busy Saturday night, if you know what I'm saying, for all those people. Drinks on the Queen! Way. Um, at the end of the service, the vicar approached our pew and said, Her Majesty would like to meet delegates from the conference. Wait, what? I thought. The Queen and Duke of Edinburgh had been at the service, but screened off from public view. Three of us were granted a 15-minute audience with the monarch, during which she expressed a keen interest in peace negotiations. I'll never forget those 15 minutes, and my children, who've all grown up now, have heard this story so often, they tell it better than I do. And they learn the moral of it any time we had a church service to attend and they were not enthusiastic. They joke and say this, never miss an opportunity to worship the king because you might just get to meet the queen. <laughs> what a remarkable woman. Faith is instrumental in you enduring the stuff you're going to go through. Fundamental. Some of you say yeah and amen to that because you know what it feels like. You know what it feels like when it makes more sense to just throw in the towel, believe in someone else, follow a fad. It takes more guts to stick to your guns and see the race till the finish. This is why this is a great way to tie off our little mini-series called Rhythms of Grace. Over the last few weeks, you've heard some fantastic messages from our associate leaders, Siobhan and Rach. And there's lots of things to pick up on there, but did you notice something? That at the end of every talk, they did. And if you, if you haven't heard them, go on Facebook, watch replay, get the audio podcast. It always ends in the same place. Jesus. That we can give you 15 minutes to live in well, practical tips on whatever, but we're not the experts, but we're followers of Jesus. So it always lands and ends there. That, that's your finish line. And today, I believe it will be your starting line too. It's important that we go back to the beginning of this series and look at the first scripture that we talked about. And this is in the book of Matthew, chapter 11. Again, if you have your Bibles and maybe notes on your phone from last week, you can turn back there. I'm sure you've uh, copied them into the. It's Matthew chapter 11, and it'll be on screen. And it's from the message version. And this has been our uh, sort of principal key scripture. Matthew 11, 28 to 30 says this, and this is, this is Jesus' words. Are you tired and worn out, burnt out on religion? Then come to me, get away with me, and, re and you recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. The good news for you, my friend, is that someone wants your company. The king of the ages, the king of kings himself, wants to be your friend. He wants to stand next to you through every trial and tribulation. He wants to hold your hand and hold you. He wants to hold you up, and he wants to set the pace, and it's him who chooses you. The king of glory chooses you. You matter. You're of value. So don't let anything in your mind trick you and try and suppress you into some melancholic state that you're not good enough because the truth is you're not worthy for the king's company. 
But that doesn't diminish your value. Nay, it's the opposite. That even though you're not worthy to be in the presence of a perfect and holy king, he still chooses to pivot and be with you. You have an infinitely more value than you realize today. That deserved a, a clap. The key to the rhythms of grace thing is smack bang in the middle of this section where he says this, walk with me, work with me, walk with me, work with me. Who are you walking with? Last week was a great message from Rach, ultimately about walking. Who are you walking with? Before that, phenomenal message from Chevy. Who are you working with? What's your life about? Walk and work. And that's the key. You're not alone. He keeps you company. The God of the universe wants to be with you. Or as Luke Skywalker once said, may the unforced be with you. Oh, come on, guys. That was golden. I tell you what, I could trademark that and sell it. Years ago, when I first started running, I, um, I, I wasn't very good. I'm still not very good, but I was worse back then. And so a good idea is when you're bad at something, you sort of partner up with somebody who's good at it. So I asked my friend, would he come running with me? And, um, and so that's what we did, and, and we went out. And it was really helpful, actually, because uh, sort of as we were running, he was doing like these encouragements. So was, we were running together. Um, Ollie, do your legs still work? Just about, yeah. Can you get up? Go on. He's creaking. Yeah, there we go. Um, right, I'll come down to you. Camera guys, I'm coming down here. I'll come down to you. Oh, that really hurt. Brave face. Okay, mate. So um, so as I was running, so you're me, as we're running, let's just run up, up, run up and down it. Yeah, yeah, just like, <laughs> let's go, come on. So as, as we were running, let's, let's run up here now. Let's run up here. And run. So as running, saying, right, chin up. Come on, good posture. Yeah, keep your head up, keep your head up. Yeah, okay, slow down. Slow down now. That's it, yeah. So you've got to take your time. You've got to finish well. That's it. We'd, it'd be like, watch that hole there. Watch it. That's it. Where there's a blame, there's a claim. Well done. That's it. Come on, up these steps round here. See if the Michael, how are we doing? Welcome team. You okay? Keeping a watch on. Yeah, keep an eye on these lot. They're weird. So, so yeah, that's it. Come up here. And we're hitting an incline. So come on, we can do it. Push it harder, faster. Don't knock over this little girl. I'm sorry. And here we go. Last kilometer. Let's run down here. Come on, finish strong. Come on, that's it. You can do one. Five more minutes. Let's go. Let's go. And he would like PT me. And it was great because it was like free personal training. It was brilliant. But this is what was happening, you see, because when you're with someone that's better than you, they're kind of helping you to see what matters most. Like, oh, you thought that was an issue. Actually, it's not as big of an issue. Like, come on, chin up, posture, watch out for this, set the paces. It's brilliant. And there's no better analogy for me than this scripture than that. To walk and to work with Jesus, you get the ultimate personal trainer that your money can afford. Because as you're running with him, he's telling you what really matters. Come on, let's do it again. Come on. But this time, that's it. Come on, you might be enthusiastic. Sorry, you just, yeah. there you go. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> right. So, so as you're running, would you, so I'm Jesus, right? Yeah, very Wigan Jesus. So yeah, thanks. Um, how are you doing? Right. So, so as you're running, you're running with Jesus. We're going to go down here. And he's saying, come on, posture right. Come on, shake off that sin. Shake off that brokenness. Hey, that's not you. Hey, watch out for that hole there. Watch out for that. That's it. Well done, buddy. Yeah, that's it. Okay, well, slow down. Slow down. Hey, stop striving. You don't need to strive. I set the pace. Hey, watch out for the small child. So, <laughs> here we go. We can do it. We can push harder. Come on. Open incline. Open incline. And then right around the corner to a strong finish. That's it. Come on, like you did in Wigan Park. Go on. That's it. Go on. Oh, that's it. Push, push, push. You can do it. And so you get this personal trainer experience with Jesus. Which is amazing because it doesn't matter whether you're hitting an incline. It doesn't matter whether you're going through potholes because Jesus is next to you, working with you, walking with you. But do you know what your responsibility is? You've got to keep up. You've got to keep up. Because what happens is we start our journey with God. And if you're not of faith, this isn't to you. But if you are of faith, we start our journey with Jesus and say, hey, Jesus, I believe in you. You're the son of God. You're amazing. Usually people cry, oh, this is great. And then we run. We run with Jesus. Up again, Ollie, that's it. We start running with Jesus. We start running with Jesus. And then suddenly, whoever's got that thing just start shit. And suddenly we start running with Jesus. Suddenly we hear, I see her a sound. You're Jesus in this. So you stand here. Hear a sound, that's it. And suddenly I'm stopping. 
And Jesus heading off. Suddenly the greatest distraction that's been ever invented by man is a bag of Haribo right over there. <laughs> so Jesus is off here and he's running off. And suddenly something sweeter is, oh, come on, give me that bag. Oh, yeah. Which is the best Haribo, anybody? Egg. If you said anything other than an egg, you should get out right now. These are great. And then there's a heart as well. Mm, the heart. Mm. Bit of a different ratio than the egg, but it still works. You know what I'm saying? Put your hands down, no chance. Threw me Uncle Joe's before, not Haribo. But you see what happens is, I didn't think about this, my mouth is full of sweets. We get distracted. Where's Jesus? You've stopped. You've got to finish the rate, that good and faithful servant. Come on. But what happens is, we get distracted by something sweet. And we're like, ooh, I'm tired. And then Jesus sits down in a huff because he's like, where were you? I did all that on my own. You can, you can enjoy those, Jesus. I'm finished with you now. The problem is, we, we get distracted and tempted. And then we take the sweets and suddenly we're walking again and no one's around to tell us, hey, keep going, you can do it. Chin up, brush the sin off, brush the brokenness off. I don't do it. So start getting upset. So I'm like, man, this is kind of stitched. This is hurting a bit more than it did before. I start tripping up over things because no one's in front of me saying, just watch that because that thing might take you out. I hit an incline and it starts to get hard and the only voices I can hear in my ear isn't Jesus Christ, but it's my own voice saying, you failed at that before, you're going to fail again. They said that when you were a kid, so you ain't going to do it this time. Pfft, you think you could do that? Suddenly the voices in my brain start to, I start to walk with them and work with them. When Jesus said, I can help you live freely and lightly, come on somebody. If you work with me, if you walk with me, I'm not going to put anything on you. I'm going to set the pace. Do you know what the cool thing is about this race uh, that I just ran? Was there was a guy called Matthew. And he's a pace setter, right? And I don't know what one of them was. I thought it was something you had fitted into your heart. But apparently it's a person in a race. And they have a big flag on him. And it's the Israel flag. I'm joking. And if you're a Christian for long enough, you'll get that joke. Israel. Like, no, it's not that. It's not that. Um, ask someone who's been to church for ages. Wow, that's funny. Um, so they, they just got this flag that says 60 minutes. So me and Ollie start this race off and we clock this guy. He's like, he's got a flag and he's setting a 60 minute sort of pace. So all I need to do is follow that guy. Because if I can keep up with that guy, because my, my aim, my aim was an hour was 60 minutes. So I thought, this is easy. I thought I'd have to look at my watch every two minutes. I'm literally, his name's Matthew. He's a legend. He's a trustee for the Age UK. He's also a volunteer runner and they do all sorts of stuff. And I told him, this is the church. I was like, the grocery and postcode. And it was a great time with him. And then I left him in the dust on the last K. And I was like, bye, Matthew. <laughs> I'm walking and working with someone better. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> so I've had a banana. I'm very giddy. Um, but it was brilliant. And do you know what? All the way through that race, knowing that I would have to get up and speak to you guys after, was this. Jesus is the great pace setter. If you just stick with him, you'll get to where you need to be when you need to be. I didn't know the route turning up. I'm stupid. But he did. So all I did, he was like, okay, we're turning left. Don't go over that side. And we went round the stadium. I didn't know what pace I was going, but because he was all the time checking his pace, people were running past me. People who were older than me, broader than me, smaller than me. I was like, if a hobbit's going to beat me in this race, why am I following you? <laughs> I will stop there. Um, but I thought, you know, I'm just going to stick with this guy. Because this guy knows my pace. I don't know this hobbit's pace. I don't know their pace. But I know my pace. And this guy's running at a pace I know I can handle in a way I know I need to go. So all I need to do is not get tempted and run off quick. Is not get tempted and get disillusioned because this guy's going slower than I think. But all I've got to do is say step and step and step with a great pace setter. And I'll get to where I need to be exactly when I need to be. So you see, my friend, it's all about Jesus. 
And if you want to know a great pace in life, if you want to know how to run this race excellently and well, all you've got to do is stick with Jesus. But it's your responsibility. It's not his. The great Bible says nothing separates us from the love of Christ. True, but we create some distance sometimes. Jesus is off running and say, hey, follow me, come with me, all you who are weary. Hey, we, I'll go at a pace you can follow. But it's your responsibility not to fall back into old addictions and habits, not to walk away when things get hard. Just because there's a new thing, you think, oh, that challenges my concept of, no, 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 it's not religion, it's relationship. And if you stick with Jesus, that's your responsibility. So many times I see people come to our phenomenal church community. They have an experience with God that changes their life. And something happens a month later where they get disappointed. Well, guess what, bud? That's life. And it's not about you, God, controlling life, but it's God helping you navigate life, helping you set your pace, helping you to watch for hazards, helping you to brush you off and fix your posture, helping you to push when you need to push, when you need to lay off when you need to lay off until you cross the finish line. So let me ask you this. Are you creating distance between you and the pay setter? Are you too ashamed to admit the sin and the brokenness? Are you too, to admit what's really going on? Are you letting things build up inside you that's creating resentment and bitterness between you and Jesus? Because it's very easy. All you need to do is come back to where Jesus is setting that pace. Okay, I'm done. Why don't we stand to our feet? I'd love to pray for you. I've got one more thing to say, but let me just pray for you. Next week, I'm so excited. There's a new series starting. You know, this church community isn't always about the messages, but you know, God speaks a lot through these times together. I'm really excited to revisit the Mark by the Mantle series, part two, which starts next week, which I'm so excited. So God did some amazing stuff at the start of the year through that series. And now me and the leadership team, we're going to revisit that and we're going to finish what God started. So I encourage you, there's some big stuff coming over the next two months. And I'd love you to be present and aware and mindful of what's going on. Uh, Nash, you can take this table away now, mate. Um, so this is the medal we got from um, the Wigan 10K. I think it's real metal. I think. Um, I was kind of hoping it was chocolate, though, which is a bit of a shame, but that's fine. Um, and what you do is, when, when you finish the race, they give you a medal, don't they? And they say, well done. That were really good, that. Well done. And so, um, so they give you a medal, and you're like, yeah, woo, I did it, woo, yeah. And Eden, Eden, my daughter, just says, well, can I have your medal? So I'm like, it often ends up in her room anyway, right? So you get this medal. But the reality is this. You know, we all get medals in life, like business manager medal. And um, this car, a Mercedes, you know, that's a medal. Um, this reputation and this kind of stuff, we all get medals, right? But the thing is, when you die, you give all your medals away. Because suddenly, you're not in the presence of winners anymore. But you're in the presence of the world's greatest loser. is Jesus. So you go to heaven, and every single medal that you've ever won in your entire life, Jesus is on the throne. This is what you'll do. You'll take it off your neck and you'll stick it on the floor. And you'll go, I'm not worthy to wear that medal because you lost it all for me. So in my eyes, Jesus, you're the winner, not me. Take it. Because that's like what I've got to give you. I have nobody, I have no money. They don't do contactless here in heaven. So just take everything that I was successful at and it's yours and you lay it before his feet. Because in this life, you wanna be a winner and that's great and you should go for gold. But understand this, there is someone who deserves so much more praise than a scrawny little medal that I got on a Sunday morning, and it's Jesus. And every single one, if you've not a faith in here, it doesn't apply to you. But if you are, know this, that every medal, and it, 
in the book of Revelation, the last book in the Bible, he said that we'll all turn up at heaven one day and every crown that we've got, we'll put it at the feet of Jesus. Because Jesus ain't wearing a crown. He's not. His body's, his body's the crown. The holes in his hands, and his wrists, they're the jewels in the crown. The weird thing is, is that Jesus, Jesus ascended into heaven. There's only a few people that happened with in the Bible. So he has the body that he has had on earth in heaven. So we'll turn, we'll turn up, our body stays here, our spirit goes on. Don't know what we're gonna look like. Jesus is the only one stood there looking worse than you did before you died. With bumps and burns and bruises and scars. That is enough to shake your soul today. Knowing that that's what true endurance looks like. Not a medal, not the fact I had a brilliant 30 year career in this. That's all great, that's awesome. But Jesus is the great loser who won it all for you. That's another reason why I respect the queen. Because you know there's no queen in heaven, you know? That when you get to heaven, it's just gonna be Lilibet there. But hey, Lilibet, look at all that that happened. Because when she gets to heaven, she'll take that crown off her head. I was king of it, I was queen of an empire. I was one of the wealthiest people in the world. But I never missed a Sunday service, Jesus, because you were the reason why I could endure past the wars, past the debt, past the crises, and it's all for you, Jesus. I have done, I am a good and faithful servant. I have finished this race. It was all about you, Jesus. And then she'll walk off and go and find a husband. So let me ask you a question. Are you creating distance between you and the pace setter in the minute? Have we closed our eyes? Let me pray for you. Jesus, we come to you and we say we're sorry for all the things that we've done wrong. God, the things that create that distance, we know nothing can separate us from you. And we understand, God, that it's our responsibility to work with you and walk with you. It's an invitation, but it's our job to keep up. So Lord, we're sorry for all the things. If you're in here and there's stuff going on in your life, just begin to apologize to him. So Jesus, I'm sorry for doing that, for thinking that. God, I said I wouldn't do that again, but I did. Lord, I'm sorry that I've not been as committed enough. Jesus, I'm sorry I've let things get in the way. God, take my medals, take my crowns, take everything, Jesus, because it's all about you. I can't match what you did. God, take it. God, I'm sorry for the distance, Lord, I've created in my relationship with you. Lord, I'm coming back to the heart of worship. I'm coming back close to you. God, I wanna walk with you. I wanna work with you. Accept my forgiveness, Lord. I love you so much. I love you so much, Jesus. I don't wanna give up on this race. I mean, if you're in here and you're truly repentant, you begin to pray your own prayer. Jesus, I'm sorry. Hey, thank you for loving me no matter what. Thank you for receiving me back. I love you, Jesus. Thanks for watching. If you want to find out anything more about faith, Jesus, or our community, please reach out. Our team will be happy to help. You can DM us on social media or you can email us on info at tcclife.com. I'll see you next week. Bye.